I completely forgot. In other words, I had the mic here. It's hanging like Billy C. Farlow, who used to play with Commander Cody and his last, Lost Planet Airman. He cracked me up. He would go on the stage with a guitar that was unplugged. I mean, it wasn't plugged into an app, and he would play like that. Yeah. So um, why did I bring that because up? Because he was bad? No, no, no. He didn't play. He was the singer. Ah, he was the lead singer. Gotcha. Billy C. Farlow. It was a great band. Great band, but I don't want to get into that. But was it, why did I bring that up? Uh, because of why your mic was unplugged. Yeah. So... Um, the thing is, I get everything in the reg- regular place. What you should do is get everything in the regular place and plug it in. Not get, ooh, here's approximately where I'm going to set up today. All right. Right? Yeah. So it's like, ooh. Maybe go past the schematic. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's something about IRL that's very powerful. It you is. know what I mean? It's true. I must say, do I have a must say? You absolutely have an Ed Grimley going today, yes. Let me just tell you, before we get into uh, what you want to talk about, which I'm so sick of you dominating the show did you see jiminy glick host uh uh bill jimmy kimmel it's fucking i just can't imagine a greater this is the greatest moments of my i mean i didn't love everything that they did because he's just wrestling with melissa mccarthy and right. wrestling with Nick, but it was he, that character gold solid gold yeah as far do you like that character yeah i do absolutely and you know that's his real chin huh okay, wow hmm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh I thought that was excellent. Now, here's the thing I want to tell you. Chirp, I think. Chirp. <laughs> no. So people are people going to like this? You'll, well, of course, I know that you edit out all the silent spots. <laughs> really? I don't have that many days to edit, Andy. I do edit out a lot of the silent spots. That's a big part of my job. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> now, here's the thing I want to explain to you. I am at my wit's end. I'm extremely upset, even with my therapy training and everything. I'm at my wit's end, but I think I'm way more mature than I used to be because I still have a, I can't go the whole route of what I would normally do. But these guys like David Remnick, James Carville, everyone who's calling for Biden to step down are assholes. David Remnick has been an asshole for a long time. He had Jerry Seinfeld on. These are out of touch people. And here's my theory. Wait, you're an asshole for having Jerry Seinfeld on? <laughs> no, he was the one by asking. He had that terrible interview with Jerry Seinfeld about the gay French king. And uh, you haven't been keeping up with this stuff. Um, he did the gay. You know, and wife. I'm the asshole now. Great. No, no. But you remember the whole gay French king thing? I and do. We've that? talked about yeah, well, it a million, million, million times. That's, he said that with Remnick. He, he had a whole thing with Remnick. And that's Remnick's fault? Remnick was just. I don't even know. Who David I don't even know. You got to be good to that one. You got to be good. Okay, so. <laughs> I had to actually think. Oh, no, he got me good. Okay, so here's the thing. So they're assholes. James Carville is an asshole. And what, here's the point I'm making that I think you will somewhat agree with. It's all about their ego. They don't know what will happen if, if Biden drops out or doesn't drop out. Nobody knows what will happen. But my point is this. I hear all this noise. I hear them going. I can't be the one to say he shouldn't drop out. I, You know what I'm saying? I think last Friday when you were... I don't know what you were saying. I'm sorry. But I was like, <laughs> the, the idea that he would drop out to me was the worst idea in the world. Now I see that, okay, maybe maybe it's something could happen. I don't see how it could happen and we win the election. You know, I was starting to think of scenarios where someone who, else who's running decides to pick Kam- Kamala Harris or something like that, where she would still be on the ticket. But that's, where, that's the way I think the election could be won. But I am just uh, – these people like Susan Glasser – I, I on MSNBC, I'm, I don't watch this anymore, but they go on there, you know, Katie Torres going, well, he's doddering. He's faltering and doddering. I mean, it's, it goes right from one bad performance to uh, this is the, the – and they love it. This Katie Torres, when she was covering Trump, she loved that he won. I'm serious. She wanted him to win or she didn't care that he won. She was in – she was in uh, pigs and shit or whatever. I mean, you know, she, they kept interviewing going, well, his his supporters don't seem to mind that he's uh, racist. That was her whole coverage of his campaign. And now she's in charge of MSNBC. And so putting that annoyment aside, which is very hard for me because I, it's, it's, it's fundamentally – I believe the 2016 election was lost because of the media – and other other factors, but absolutely everybody was hanging on WikiLeaks. Everybody had a completely, you know, what I'm saying they are complicit. 
because they just want to make money and they and they don't care about right and wrong and fair play. They want the money. And, and I say, fuck them all. Fuck them all. Uh, fuck all of them, except the nighttime MSNBC. I like them. All righty. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't, I'm not, I don't it want wasn't to, a conversation, so I'm no, just no, like, okay. I'm asking you. I'm asking, <laughs> give me your take. Now, I know you're afraid you go, you're afraid you go, oh, it's going to be 45 minutes of this and then another half hour of him crying. You can uh, you can respond to my take and see if there's any well, validity to always, it. Well, as always, I have a more moderate view. Okay, <laughs> what is it? Tell me. I'm I asking mean, for that. Like, I don't think someone's an asshole just for fucking panicking about what they saw with Biden. I really don't. I think it was it was such a shocking performance. It was absolutely a we're fucked moment because you can't vote for Trump, but you have to vote for this. And when you see this, you go, yes, it's a bad debate, but it was such a bad debate. And it was such a moment of like, this is an old man having trouble that you, it's hard not to be shook. Now, I'm not saying Biden should drop out, but I'm saying it was it was stark enough a thing to be very worried. Right, but I want to make one... Both about the electability and about the actual presidency. I do want to make one slight adjustment. Yes, people can be concerned, but the same people who've been assholes for years and years who come on and pile on and panic, like the guys, yeah, I mean, pod I save, the Pod Save America guys, those guys fucking make me sick. I I can't stand them now. Is his name is his name John Favreau? One yeah, of them is, a, is yeah. the same. They're just... They are just... It's about their fucking ego, and I... No bigger fan than Obama than me, but I'm, uh, uh, it's no, Obama's not in there right now, and we want to win the election. And these guys were wrong in 2020. None of these people wanted, but I didn't want Biden, right? I didn't want no, Biden did. in 2020. Sure you did. What, towards the election, <laughs> yes. right? So yes, but, but, but at first I didn't want him. I didn't think he could win. He's old. He can't win. He's, you know, he's not, I had spoke to people who was in his administration, and they were saying he's like, you know, he's a nice guy, but he's all over the map and whatever the thing is. But, um, you know, no, I will remain angry at those people. I'm not going to comment on it because that's exactly uh, exactly what I can't do right now. In other words, I'm not going to get into with Susan Glasser and all these people who literally mean nothing to me. You know, and they and, and I they cut mean them out. A little of, something. No, they no, no, they do mean, <laughs> no, they mean a lot to me in terms of that my major wound, which is like this comes from the. Um, this part comes from the, uh, the shame shadows. It comes from the royal. The royal, I told you about the royal before, yeah. right? This is not right. God damn it. This is not right. That part of me. That's needs not the royal to- though. That's, that's, that's a different thing. The royal is how could they I do deserve this? it? Yeah. I, yes. 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 But also because things should be fair. Things yeah. in life are fair. But they're not there, Josh. They're not. And fair. as a white guy, as my maybe father I would get say, them. the fair happens once a year on Snelling Avenue. Is that what you Yes, say? he is. <laughs> That's his line. Yes. Oh, right. My mother know. was constantly upset that things weren't fair. And my father, a lawyer, <laughs> was like, yeah. Well, I that's mean, not that's how the exactly world is set up. Right. <laughs> yes. God bless your father because it's exactly right. And that's the part of me that comes from my parents. My parents. It's not even important, but they were against the, the 1968 teachers strike, uh, which was normally they would be pro teacher, but this was about Ocean Hill Brownsville and it was about, uh, black people wanting to control their district. But my, uh, so my mom decided with them, which I thought she was right, but she also didn't have me go, she had me go to school when nobody else was going to school and the teachers were screaming, screaming scab at me. And stuff like that. It was just very, it was very, I'm making the point of, it's very confusing. It's like, she had to always be, you know, fight for the right, but she didn't, you know, first of all, there was no skin off her nose that I was being yelled at at school. Right? Well, it's just so fucked up that teachers would yell at kids as yes. scab. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, and this, you know, if you research this, you will find that there, the, the teachers' union was was pretty much fucked up on this. I mean, I was never a big fan. Well, of they Alvin were. Shanker. They're yelling at kids for attending school. Yes, and I remember I could see the face <laughs> of the teacher who yelled at me. Yeah. Um, I was twelve years old, so I don't remember seventh grade, maybe eighth grade. Yeah. Uh, and it was just awful. So, so here's the thing: I know in fact, that you, you have a sketch. Cons- you have a sketch of his face in the payback book. <laughs> I had a sketch of his. And you know who I consulted? Sherry Papini. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get it, are you? Not getting it still. 
one of the major new major true crime stories. I understand that you don't follow them closely, but this was really big. Okay. I just want to let you know that I think this tremendous, first of all, in terms of growth, why do we never sit around talking about how fucked up you are and how you should grow and where your shortcomings are and how come you won't do this? And you, it's always me. I'm a problem. I'm the situation. All right. Well, I do all of mine off pod. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you say off pod. But I want you to know that I, I actually, my theory is if he loses, if we lose in, in November, I still have to live my life. I have to live my life. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't. The way I'm just like now, I'm going to jump off my building yeah. and I will die, even though it's two stories. Right. Right. Well, and I think, you know, in some ways that's the problem and I'm part of it as well, uh, which is I think a lot of people are probably in the I can't do this can't again. Take, I can't yeah, do four this more again. Years this, right. Know? Yeah. And so it's causing them to tune out and become more. uh Every man is an islandish. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give my money to the Democrats. Whoever is in the Democratic ticket, to me, this is war. And that if we lose the war, we're dead. So I don't care if, if Biden can't make it to the uh, podium. I swear to God, if that's the decision that they make, yeah. that he's sticking, I will be promoting him until uh, until the money is out of my... And by the way, how could... How do you get calls every two minutes from Democrats? I mean, let me turn it off, by the way, because it's going to come on. Yeah. All with di- all with different different tactics. Like Susan got one. one. What'd you think of debate of uh, Biden's debate performance? Right. Rated here. Right. She, I know. I think he. I don't think he did very good. That's not the point of that email. No, it's they're not. trying to get you to give again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so no, I have to. Uh, I have to empty fifty emails and about 50, about twenty texts every morning when I wake up. And I do. I do unsubscribe sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't help. Why? It's, it's not it's all fair. One master list. It's not fair, <laughs> Josh. That's not the way it should be. Okay. All right. All right. I'm all good. Right. I feel better. I feel better that you let it get me out. Let me just crap. say, Andy, the fair takes place once a year on Snelling Avenue. That's good. Well, I talked to my cousin Marsha last night, and I and she, I said, she said, where can I find you? And she, and, you know, I, 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 you listen to the show. And she oh, said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I did say to her, which I think is absolutely, I felt absolutely good about it. I said, listen to one of the recent shows. Yeah. Don't go back to year one and listen to us because uh, I don't think it was as good a show back then. I don't know. Here's the thing. I have. I'm not sure what our stride was. <laughs> I'll tell you what the problem is. <laughs> Everything the problem is, is that it's ridiculous we couldn't have been where we are in the first show now, regardless of how we did it, no. you know? No. So, so all of those things, but it's more just like if, so, if I'm going to recommend to somebody, I kind of like it when we're all cooking, you know, we're not going through all those. I, uh, should we be talking about this? Well, you know, should we have, uh, Alex Brazell over? You know, I'd rather have him. the last four or five shows feel strong to me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now you're are you on are you a different person you're like a you're like oh i the early stuff you know in, in retrospect could be that's the thing that you don't know i have no idea how the quality of this show is from the first i mean i i like what we're i doing. think the early shows were jam-packed with bits we were doing way more bits we, oh wow you know, there was like you know we remember we did there was like 90 impressions i was doing there was, <laughs> you know we had lots of running gags uh, and I think a lot of that is sort of stripped away. Right. And I think just the general counsel of someone's going to listen to a podcast that isn't dependent on previous week's information. I mean, you could say, oh, you won't know the callbacks. Yeah. But really, you don't have to have any there's, no, there's history. Nothing, there's nothing. So we'll, I'll let you know what she said. You can jump on to- or off at any time. <laughs> <laughs> is it a bandwagon? Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's, not a, a bandwagon. it's a leaky bandwagon, I think is what it is. But, you know, here's the thing. I, I The idea that I'm able to... Proc- I know you don't like this stuff because it's about emotions and things. <laughs> yes, you know, I'm dead inside. Yes. But I was steaming about it all weekend, like, you know, just in my mind, reading Susan. I don't wasn't even following him, but just the, 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 the extent that I did. And I sat down with Susan last night. I just I have to tell you, I'm... I'm 
I'm really torn up about this. And just getting it out was very good. Is that just getting it out, not screaming for three days yeah. and then coming back going, I yelled at everybody and now I feel bad. Yeah. But just letting it, letting it stew. There's nothing wrong with letting it stew or letting it work out. And that's against my normal like when the Jewish thing on October 7th, I wasn't going to come out and go, hey, yay, Jews, yay, Jews. It was like I knew something. I, I, I you know, I knew the, I, that I believed in the Palestinians. And, and it's like, who knew what, what was going to happen? But now, would you go, yay, yay, Jews? Right. I know. I know. Besides the anti-Semitism. But you wouldn't be. No one's. It's just like the first Persian Gulf War. Everybody was behind us. And then everybody saw us fuck up and saw our imperialistic, we want to get the oil or whatever their motivation was to go into Iraq. Yeah. They but they had didn't unity. go, the, in the first Iraq war, they didn't go into Iraq. Well, no, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the first one. I'm you talking said about, the first one, that's why I'm. Oh, oh, no, the second one, the second one. Okay. The second one. Well, I don't like the first one either because, because I, the first one was, was a result of them, they were, they were, of uh, uh Allies with Saddam Hussein. They weren't allies. Now, he was a fucking idiot. He shouldn't have tried to uh, invade Kuwait. But look what happened in that war. We said, rise up and uh, and we'll help you. And then then we, we no air cover. We said, what's that called when they go? They they stopped all the sky, all the air thing. So then Hussein just murdered. I mean, they, they, they murdered a lot of the people while they were saying to rise up. Yes. So, um Go see, go see Three Kings for, the, for some of the fallout of that. I think I, is that Clooney? Yeah. Oh, is it good? Yeah, very good movie. Okay, good. So, you know, uh, I, I think it's, I'm proud of myself. It doesn't matter if you're proud of myself. I'm proud of myself because I know I can relate this to, here's another example. If it was three years ago, I'd probably be in an asylum now or five years ago because I wouldn't have realized that Twitter is a bullshit. You know what I mean? I'd be in the back and forth of trying to win the election on Twitter. Yeah. You know? And so... I mean, I'm, uh, a, I'm of mixed proudness, I would say. Yeah, because For it, me? Yeah, because it's, you know, I'm glad you didn't feel a need to vent this on Twitter. Right. On the flip side, I got it. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> no, well, I don't think nor it's was, fair. Okay, I don't <laughs> Andy, I told you more than once, you keep your problems outside of the show. That's yes. not what the show is about. This is about listening to what you watched. <laughs> this is about, <laughs> I still want us to do, I can't stand this guy, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. I liked him for about 10 minutes yeah. when he said 10,000 hours. And then he was, then he wrote an article about maybe pot should be illegal. And we can't be saying pot's so great. So uh, I'm awful. But that's the kind of show I'd like to have. Is a Malcolm Gladwell look, look at the big picture. Someone actually just retweeted uh, something, an old Malcolm Gladwell joke of mine from years ago for some oh, well, reason. It? it was like, I'm glad that Malcolm Gladwell hatred is reaching a tipping point. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, when he first came out, I loved him. I mean, I didn't know enough about him. And sometimes these guys come out and you love him at first. And then you realize, oh, he's such a bright professorial. Well, but it's all, like that. Yeah, but it's also like... It, it becomes, I mean, some, the backlash becomes about how people adopt those things as orthodoxy too. Like, the, yes, yes, 10,000 hours. The way the 10,000 hours thing yeah, became just like this you. magic phrase for everybody. Yeah. You know? What happens when a hack goes to, a horrible comedian works 10,000 hours? They come up with a horribly They're hacky They're master act. hacks. <laughs> <laughs> and there is such a thing as a master hack, by the way. Yes, I think people have accused me at, at my uh, when I used to perform. No one ever accused you of being a master no, of anything. Thank you, thank <laughs> of anything. You can't let one sentence go by without ba -ba, with the old sa zing zing. Not if I'm on my post. <laughs> is that what your post is? Yes. Um, but the main thing that I'm trying to tell you from this is that I just watched a movie I liked. Uh, I've watched things this weekend. And until I turn it off and put the other stuff on, I, I want to jump out of a window. But within a half hour of watching these things, it's completely gone from my mind. It's complete, and it, It's not like it's gone from my mind, therefore I'm not going to vote in November. It's gone from my mind that I'm going to be just sitting around eating myself up every yeah. day. Because I, I didn't know that debate was going to happen. I didn't know any of these things were going to happen. 
Yeah, you? we couldn't have foreseen it. I was watching the debate thinking, oh, Trump will say something stupid and Biden will be. You no, know, I've noticed before that Biden is not a good speaker in general. You know, when he when he would do like the stuff like I'm not kidding. You know, he'd make a joke or something. Like, I'm not just not Joe. No, he's terrible. Not he's always been terrible. But this was he's always this, been terrible. This felt cognitive rather than. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you know, this really uh, felt like a guy in headlights for a lot of the time, and it was uh, right. But when did when is the president? Does he have to debate somebody? It's not my point. It's not like he uh, lost me. You know, I got you. I, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, uh, no but pro- I'm just pre- saying yeah. you have to be realistic about what happened. You know, you know that was one of my that was one of my jo- old jokes. Radio Shack's brand name was their brand name was realistic. And they called it realistic because uh, let's be realistic. It's four dollars. Right. Let's be realistic. It's yeah. garbage. Funny, okay. Sure. So I'll do my follow up joke. Uh, Radio Shack has changed its name to the Shack in a similar, not a similar move. In another move, Shaquille O'Neal has changed his name to Radio Shaquille O'Neal. <sighs> I never got that laugh on it. No, I'm just no, trying to I, recreate I, I it now. Have gotten people going. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because I have old old people watch me? I think so. Yeah, they were just coughing something up, and that's why I went to a, I went to a nice wedding this weekend. Um, our, really? My friend Megan Keister, who you know, yeah. I know you know her well. She married a guy, and it was so much fun. Good. And they, uh, yeah, it was really really fun because they did. Uh, they 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 had eloped. But then they decide. All their friends were like talking, you know. So they decide they hate the whole ceremony thing. Yeah. But they gave one, and it was just funny. It was funny, sweet, and beautiful. Yeah. So it was, and I got out of my head. I was worried because, you know, I see every alert for COVID's coming back in the summer. Summer COVID hitting big. Yeah. Summer COVID. So, but then it was pretty much all outside. That's nice. So it was worried. That's good. Yeah. I just feel like a lot of people see me as negative, Nancy. And I want to say there's also Peter Positive in there. You're, you're quite a couple. <laughs> That's how I look at it. Yeah. So, I mean, I you know, I feel uh, quietly dead inside today, really, as opposed yeah. to the rageful dead inside that you're feeling. Right. Rageful dead. I don't feel it right now, but don't get me started. <laughs> I watched a lot of basketball news this weekend because it's uh, free agency opened yesterday. So. Okay, so uh, uh, in a selfish way, did I ha- did anything help him for me? Help you in particular? Yeah, for the Knicks. Oh, because you're such a big Knicks fan. Uh, no, no, they. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If the they Knicks did. they got Miles the Bridges finals, in a trade, which was a good trade. They got uh, who? Miles, uh, Mikhail Bridges, rather. And, oh. Uh, uh, but they lost Isaiah Hartenstein. I like him. Well, like him on Dallas now. But they they didn't lose our our ball handler guy. Or right? like him on OKC rather. Huh? But they didn't lose our main ball handler guy, the uh, point guard. What's that fanboy? I can't remember his name. <laughs> Wilson? Is it Wilson? It's you not just Wilson. give me a shot. It's not Wilson. Well, there's no names like when I was a kid. I always wanted to be named. I told you this, Biff, Jess, Jack. And I wanted my last name to be Wilson, Jones, Smith. I hated being Jewish. Yeah, exactly what I, <laughs> what I got to from that, yeah. But I couldn't distinguish between the Jews I at my temple. I wanted to be called Stretch. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> that kind of thing. But there was one na- names like I didn't realize it at the time, but I was going towards, which is funny to me, Bill Henderson. I'm going to all waspy Christian names yeah. and thinking it would be great if I had that name, Biff. Not Biff, but Biff is not. Uh, no, no, Biff is a fictional name. It's from the, it's from a play, isn't it? Well, it's, it's from, from uh, it's from Death of a Salesman. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> now this is what you're getting here that has not been cured by my therapy or anything. Is the seven? It's not a lot of people have a seven second delay. You've heard about the seven second delay. I have. I have a seven second. Uh, uh, mine went blank. It just happened there. Mine went blank. Yeah, seven. And seconds. that's what happened. You to have seven second gaps. Gaps. And what's to be done about that? Uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I Start went to earlier. My, I went to my <laughs> second physical therapy. Oh my god! I thought crazy. you had already went to two as of. Uh... 
Oh, because I talked to you Friday. That's yes, right. nothing happens on the weekend. No, but here's what I did. I did all my exercises all weekend long. Did and you? I, d- I didn't feel like, uh, oh, I hate this. Oh, that's because good. I can actually feel the stretch in the areas that need stretching. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, oh, I'm a fucking monster now. Well, I knew that. I didn't smoke pot all weekend. And it's like, ask me anything. Ask, Go ahead. Ask, ask me anything me. that people requires. Say, people say, how's Andy? I say, he's a monster. <laughs> you know, give me one of those uh, Trump tests, though, with the four words. And I'll tell you, I, I'm so sober, I can do any of it. Pencil, 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 eraser. Okay. Now talk a little bit about something else. Uh, James Carville. Yeah, cool I hate dude. that guy. He's a cool dude. Really no, is. and now ask me what those were, were. What were those words? Pencil, 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 eraser? Yes, you're cured. <laughs> now, what you did wrong in that test, I know for a fact, is you're not supposed to give three of the same words. That's definitely... I don't know. I could have thrown you off by going, he did something tricky, but I can't remember. Right, because I'm so dementia. Right. Yes. <laughs> this is recovering. Your First hand, of all, I could probably hold it like that because it's not me gripping the mic. And here's the other thing. Gripping the microphone, hoping that will make the set go better. Yeah. Think about that for 35 years. Oh, oh God damn it. It's all right here. The crowd's not getting me. Ah. Yeah, I don't think you do. I don't grip it that hard? I don't think you do. I've seen you. Uh, like, I've seen you with You've two seen mics. Every- I've seen you flipping two mics around. Flipping One under two your mics, armpit. I'm my nose on the mic. <laughs> I do think, though, that I am going to, uh, if I go back to the club, what I was, here was supposed to happen. You get back from Austin, you start planning your sets, and then you make a, uh, in August, you shoot your album. Right. No, I went back and said, hey, like, I want coffee. I did it. I want coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. What'd you do? I proved that I could do it. <laughs> if I wanted to. Went on a plane. And I did an hour, or maybe 40 minutes, but still, at least 10 of it was new. I'm good. I'm, I'm very good. Good. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. Yes, is I he am. a good boy? Yes, yes he, he is. is. Yes, he is a very <laughs> good boy. I just realized I haven't been over to your house. I know that you don't want me over there, but I do want to see the new construction. I know you don't believe me, but no. I do. I am missing the dogs. Yeah. But if I did miss the dogs, why am I not going over there and going, schmooka do ding dang You don't even know one of the dogs. Coley? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you had Clyde and... uh Lucky, I couldn't remember their sex. For always confused that Lucky was a was a woman. Yeah, and Clyde, that you couldn't mess up. No, you don't name a woman Clyde. Not oh, except in these time period, you don't know what's going to happen now. I mean, now with this time period, you know, the, today you, you don't even know if it's a girl or was it a girl or a boy. The hair's so long. Can you believe that? That's exactly the material. That's being brought out by these uh, anti-trans people. Uh, how do I know? It's a ma- ma- it's a man with a it's a, a woman with a dick or something like it's the same thing. Why don't you do. shut up? <laughs> I really don't think that's what's happening out there. Don't start to sus- <laughs> don't start to. I just don't want you to go positive on the anti-trans movement, no. which you have been doing. Stop sending me the Lyndon LaRouche emails. Do you remember that guy? Sure. Do you think he ever lived or? He did live. Did he live? Well, I mean, like, was he a fictional character? I never. I, well, I don't remember seeing him. Hi, I'm Lyndon Larouche. How's everybody going? This guy knows him. I don't remember seeing him live. I just remember people campaigning. Well, he was for in jail him. for some of it. <laughs> oh, by the way, you were right, and I have to apologize. You said, and I was upset about it. You said probably he's going to be immune for everything, and that's good. That's good is what you said to me. Yes, yes. You said to me, he's the president. He needs to have special powers. It goes back to what Nixon said, I said. That, if the president does it, it's legal. Well, that's what they were doing. And it was Katie Turr was going, I bet uh, Nixon is laughing in his sli- – whatever you do when you laugh or you joke from the grave. He was yeah, doing. I think laughing in his grave. Laughing in his grave. Spinning in his grave. Now, why would that be – I'm going to ask spinning you – Spinning with glee in his grave. Right, but how did it ever get like he's spinning in his grave – how did that ever get to be the guy's upset? Well, because what what can you do in a coffin? <laughs> Spin around. It's not like he's sitting up in his coffin. Ow, I banged my head. You can't do it. So all you can really do to express some sort of feeling is spin. See, that's why I think you are, in a way, Mr. Science, of the two of us. Of the two of us, I am. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. That's, ooh. <laughs> mm. Let's talk about spirituality again and your openness to believe that there's God for the for the rest of the show. We did this for this. Okay. Let's go on for the no, I have no you know, you you get me wrong, my friend. No, no, I do not get you wrong. 
I do not get you wrong. I get you exactly right. The first thing you ever said to me was that you're open to believe. You don't know what's going to happen. You're open to believing, and you don't put people down if they believe. You've said that to me since day one. Yes. So it's just been when I've tried to explain to you my grasp of these very, very complex theories that I don't understand myself. Right. When I try to, when but, I try but to insist they're true nonetheless. <laughs> well, I try to, I try to communicate to you, and you're like, "Hey, it doesn't sound right." Well, read the original book. I say to people. Right. To and the then people. I go, but I don't want to. I found I'm a, happy with my beliefs. I found a good restaurant near us. And again, we don't live near here. Okay. But this one is, uh, we don't live, we live in Panorama City. <laughs> but this place called Cafe Arrangi. Cafe, and it's, it's close enough that you could order it. Uh-huh. Cafe Arrangi. Even I could order it. Wow. Well, here's the thing. Here's what I do in my, I have come up with a, with a, and I keep saying, I'm going to tell Josh about these places. You don't have to like them, but I, after, after so many DoorDash disappointments, it's like, you can get a kebab by just yelling out the window, kebab, and then you'll have four kebabs come by. So almost every restaurant on DoorDash is serving some kind of a kebab. So if you want to have really good Mediterranean style food, or, you know, this is a Russian Armenian place, uh-huh. but, uh, it's just, oh, I love everything about it. I just love it. Huh. People are knock if they knock on the door and I answer it. No, don't. Okay. Candy Graham. You heard that, right? No, I didn't. Uh, You're gaslighting if is, me. If, if there is a thief, right, who's trying to get in, yeah. I shouldn't get more like, oh, I guess I got to find out, right? I no, stay more no, here. Protect yourself. <laughs> also, Cal- I like this place, California Fish Grill. It's in um, North Hollywood, kind of, yeah. and they have fresh fish. Koshery place? I don't think it's kosher, but I just realized that m- me and the wife were saying we need to eat. We love fish, but we were trying, but we don't eat. It's like you don't have this problem because you're not emotionally fucked up. But I, be, and I think this is OCD. But I, I, I have every day I wrestle with my the fact that I eat meat. I don't stop eating it. Yeah. But I wrestle, and I wanted to get the free range and uh, the pasture raised, and I feel guilt. And I feel guilty about how much I love steak, for example. Yeah. Shrimp, I've, uh, as, as I said, if shrimp wasn't meant to be eaten, it wouldn't taste so fucking good. So shrimp have no, I, I, I have, but why do I keep going? To, I'm just telling you this. I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying it's justified. I'm saying it's a maybe part of the OCD disease that I cannot get rid of. I can't just say, I eat meat. Others don't. That's fine. Yeah. I have to somehow say, I eat meat, but I'm probably torturing animals. You still because... have to virtue signal as you chomp down your... Uh... <laughs> What's your take? Do you think about that? I No, I do think about it, and I think that uh, there is a certain righteousness to vegetarianism or veganism, depending on the motivation for it. Right. Um, and I think... That you can't really argue with. Talk I don't argue with. I only argue. Yeah. I only argue with the way people behave, right? When doing right. it, rather than the actual belief. I don't. I don't poo-poo veganism or vegetarianism. You right. Know? Right. And I totally, as an animal lover myself, you know, there is a there's just a plain, you know, there is a discomfort with the fact that you're eating something that you would may have, have been, been mistreated. It may have been mistreated, or more to the point, just got killed for you to eat. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, um, but the piece that I've had to come to is I didn't set up the system, <laughs> you, know, it's right. like, you know, I didn't, you know, had I come up with the idea of eating meat yeah, and tried to convert everyone to it, I would feel, you know, I, A little would, bit guilty. I, I would feel A little guilty, guilty about that. But this is, this is what I came to the planet doing. Yeah. You know, this is what was here on the planet when I came here. And uh, and life is too short to rob myself of that joy at this point. <laughs> right, right. Well, the other thing I want to tell you is like when you see – like when I saw – I don't know if I pitched it enough, Billy and Molly and Otter love story. Billy and Molly and Otter love story. He did. Okay. And this is what Alan Watts used to say that I actually – he goes, if you look at the world – it's all about the the big the little fishes get eaten by the bigger fishes and the bigger fishes get eaten by the, it's we're all eating it's part of the food chain that we're all in so in other words right. would you go into the water and go to those fish stop trying to eat other fish 
find some algae, right? It's like right. You, you can't. But that's uh, yeah. But and 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 th- that there's there's legitimacy to we're all animals here. We're just trying to eat. But yes. But you know, but other you know there isn't industrial farming and other species that's right exactly you know, yeah there isn't yeah. there isn't the uh there isn't a moral obligation involved in how a lion kills a zebra you know right exactly exactly um yeah so but and when you think about that you know some people say we have larger brains because we have eaten meat i don't know if any of that's true but the thing is is that it's like it's interesting to you because it's interesting because I really do feel like it's one of those things that there's no there's no one answer. We people like me and you are always going to be upset if we think. Well, that, and you can't and you can't. I don't think I don't think it's a. It's not it's not an intellectually interesting or strong argument to say that, you know, that because cavemen do it, we do. You know, of of course, you know, hunting had to exist to su- exist until way later in in human evolution when agriculture allowed people to do stuff other than look for food during the day. But let me say this. I look at it differently. I look at, I can, I used to love fishing. I loved it. I have no problem catching a fish. I must say, oh, chop the head off, but I have no problem catching a fish and eating it. Yeah, but that's your, but because you've drawn that moral line. That's right. I've drawn that moral line and it's, Arbitrary. It's arbitrary. It's, it it's absolutely yeah. arbitrary. It's arbitrary. Arbitrary. But the thing is, you can live in a world where you feel something, you feel mixed feelings, but then if you don't have OCD, then I don't think you go to these extremes. OCD is always telling you. I don't think that's true. I mean, I think the world is pushing us to not right. – okay. to, to, to pushing everybody away from ambivalence. You know, it's in, it, in what sense? In the sense that everything is right. Oh, everything is ride or die now. You know, right. and yeah. and and people. I mean, the 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 pro Palestinian movement is is a really good example of that. Where of course there's an argument for the Palestinian people. You know, yes, but the ride or die people will take the whole fucking thing. No, you know, I, those people, I see a lot of anti-Semitism because, because it's not it's not about considering the issue. It's about which team am I on? You know, right, and, right, and and it feels you know, and as a guy who fucking hates joining teams of any kind to begin right. with, um, I I feel this sort of rebellion right now of of. Not having any nuance in, in my opinion yes. or not having any sort of, uh, ambivalence about certain issues. And, you know, there's still room, I believe, for more than one opinion on a lot of issues in the world. Yeah. But the tone is not, doesn't allow for that any longer. Right. Right. But nuance is what I missed growing up. Nuance is what I did not get. Right. I got black and white. And yeah, no, is, we got different lessons growing up, for sure. I wish I had your dad as my dad, and I wish that no one had my mother as my mother. I love her. I've forgiven her, but I don't wish her on anybody. Yeah. Or, or even her sisters. And Marsha, this could be the first one Marsha's listening to. <laughs> You know, they, we talked about uh, Marsha like, uh, yesterday. It was a very – it's like, you know, God bless – God rest and all that kind of thing. But my, my aunt, she, she was, uh, had a nervous breakdown and had to go to an institution. And, uh, when she was younger and my mother had uh, many, many problems. And there's just, now I see this in every family and it's, it's not, not just my family, right. obviously, sure. but you can see a streak. Like on my father's side, there's a whole other bunch of problems. But on my mother's side, there's a whole bunch of, uh, O horrible OCD and guilt ridden and all this kind of and, and going through in this case, I think that my mother's mother was a monster. So all three of the daughters uh, had no self-esteem. She was literally monstrous in the way that many people were back in those days but and still today. But it, it was just terrible. So when you compare notes about it, you realize we would. So we're just talking about how we both had no mother when we grew up, literally no mother. And when you. And that we didn't, I didn't understand that when I was little. I just didn't, I please, I, I had a mother. Why would you I mean, understand that? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. You couldn't. I couldn't ask. understand. Yeah. So, um, so just that part of it is very cool to me to, you know, I'm reaching out to her and, um, it's good. It's good when you, re- you know, it's good when you do that. I don't know. I'm not making a, a deep point, but I'm just saying when you see, when you can compare notes, 
Yeah. It's like not to yell at my mother again. I swear to God, if people sue me over this or sue my mother, it's not about, even, no matter how upset I get, it's not about that. I absolutely know my mother could not have done anything differently. She couldn't have. No, but I know, I mean, Allison gets a lot of comfort, uh, when people confirm the craziness of her childhood yes. to her. You know, right. Because she was very much treated as the problem, you know, and I, and, Anyone who was like even one step outside of her immediate family saw the craziness that was going on. Wow. But, but she felt very alone at the time. So it, it gives her great comfort to, uh, fi- you know, to be retroactively told, no, you're not crazy. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Yeah. But when you get into this true crime stuff, I mean, you, it is, it is absolutely true that these people who become serial killers, nothing is justifying it. But they almost always have been sexually abused or something or abused uh, in their lives. And now it happens to everybody that we can get abused. And so the, the, they go towards serial killing. But you can see that if we don't deal with the whole thing, what all these ills continue. Right. It, because well, it's, it's the same. I mean, it's just on a small on a on a non illegal scale. I mean, it's the same thing for you. It's like you can blame whatever the fuck you want on your parents, but that your behavior is still your own. You know. Right. Right, right, and it can and be, I think and the behavior a behavior can be explained. It just can't always be justified. Right, and the, the the reason why therapy for those of you who want it is great is because if you're unconsciously running around getting angry and not understanding why you're getting angry, you really don't have a piece of the puzzle that makes it make sense. Right. You stay in that anger all the time. Right. You know, it's like when I was more judgmental, like my parents, I was just like, "Why is this person angry at me?" And oh, you know, right. uh, so it gives you the perspective. But no, you don't ever want. Well, no story is completely. It the gives, same as another story. Yeah, but it does give some order to the chaos, at least. Absolutely, and also that, and and, and that's why when I watch things like like um, The Sopranos, I'm just very. I don't know why I should be impressed. I'm just very impressed at the depth of the emotional. Like that Nancy Marshawn character may be the most evil woman I've ever seen on TV, or evil person almost on TV. Yeah, and it's on and her. She was unbelievable at it. Good. Oh, at yeah, it. absolutely. So, but yeah, no, and it, it takes a lot of, uh, I mean, it takes, it takes bravery as a writer to write a, a, a character, especially a woman that despicable. Yeah, I know. And, 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 well, there, were, I think they had women writers in the show, right? Robin or somebody or? I think so. Yeah, I I don't get the feeling but that I have a feeling you know, that that character was coming directly from David from Chase. David Chase. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and you know who's amazing? I haven't seen her since. Is a a a a Totoro? Is that her name? Yeah. Who played Jack? Is that is that a sister of the Totoros? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't seen her do much. She was so great. She was so great, and I think it's hard to imagine to remember what. Because she was such an annoying person in that show, yes. just like the, but she was the female version of uh, of uh, Gandolfini, right? You know what I mean? And and now there's yeah, a guy she named came from the same damage. Richie Aprio just got out of prison, Uh-oh. played by oh, James shit. Preval. Oh shit! That is one of the meanest characters I've ever. Seen. And I I have to let it go now. I am not going to be cast as a mafia don or an no. evil guy. No, you might have to cry. <laughs> That's my big fear. I know. My big fear. What if every script I get sent? I'm sending, I'm pretending I get sent scripts. <laughs> what if every script I got sent now has a crying component? The other thing oh, I realized sorry, about I was thinking about that. The other, the other thing I think about why actors are so not all actors, but why acting in a sense is boring to talk about is because it's just not as. Ex- funny as they're in that life that's what they do they live they're on sets and so it's all about yeah and i learned to uh, fish or i learned to do kayaking it's like there's nothing you well, eddie murphy's you right talk to actors do you <laughs> no i don't but eddie murphy's right eddie murphy was right he had no life experiences to draw on yeah in that sense he was right 
and everything he said that people were going to laugh. What are you at. talking about? I'm saying that the acting <laughs> life right is kind what? of boring. It's boring. It's to me. I used to want to go. Oh, I can't wait to hear uh, this celebrity on this talk show talk about the acting job. And yeah. It's almost always not interesting. It's not interesting. No. Right. Yeah. That's maybe, maybe that's why it's hard to host a show. You know, I mean, host. I mean, I'm saying I am hosting a show, but but I but when I was a kid, I used to go, oh, when Johnny Carson, this person's going to tell because it's not inside baseball stuff. If it was inside baseball, I would love it more. Well, I don't understand what you're saying, then. In other words, if they were telling you, if they, the actor was coming on to the show to tell you about the uh, uh, all the politics that was at the studio they were doing and how the movie almost didn't get made and all that kind of stuff. That would be interesting, but they can't talk about that because they're promoting a movie, right. usually, right? That would be interesting, but uh, but the just hearing actors. So I understand that you did you learn to speak Greek? Well, yes, I did. Yes, yeah. I did. And uh, and they always do something and anything funny to say about that, and it's never funny. Right. And did you? Was this the first time you ever went horseback riding? It's all that. That's all it is. Tom Cruise. Did you do all those stunts? Well, I didn't do all of them, but I did many of them. It's bull, oh, 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 ring. It's bu 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 ring. It's bu 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 bu. Actors are boring. Actors are boring. Andy's good. Everyone else is bad. Josh is good when he agrees with Andy. Everybody's bad. I think I woke my hold on, wake the building. But I'm liking Jimmy Kimmel more and more. Jimmy Kimmel's. Comedy sense when he does bits is a little broad for me, but the fact that he would have Jiminy Glick as a fill-in thing, yeah. I, I just, I mean, that audience was like, all of a sudden, it was like they had known Jiminy Glick their whole life. Right. Well, he's, he's been around, that character has been around, that's almost Dame Edna-like at this point. But. I, know. I know! But it's funny, I was talking to my friend Ricky, who I had lunch with yesterday, uh, we were talking about how you can't, it, it's it's a, it's a dangerous game trying being, you know, there's only the only, there's only one way to play it with Jiminy Glick. And that is think it's funny. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yes. You know, yeah. 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 There's yeah. a lot, there's some actors who can't go, you know, they will either try to, to yes. And him and, and, yes. and, and, and try to top him in some way. Huge mistake. That's what, that's what Kroll tried to do. Kroll tried to play along a little too much and, well, Melissa and, did a good job, I thought, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. But clearly, they, Nick Cole you know, didn't do a bad job. He I thought, just, he like, did, he played it wrong, though, as far as I'm concerned. Right, I see. Like, you know, like, yeah. uh, I saw the, I saw his, and then I saw, uh, uh, Bill Hader, who just completely surrendered to it. It was good. It was and fun, it was right? Hilarious, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and then he did, Bill Maher had him on last a couple of weeks oh i ago couldn't watch that to How interview was him well but he was like in the middle like bill he right. couldn't he couldn't go all the way to giving it up because he's bill maher like he right, still had he to, to he still had to slightly de defend himself but he also <laughs> knew he invited on jiminy glick to do this to interview and was him. he pretty was he pretty uh intense with him yeah i'm talking about jiminy yeah jiminy's yes, point yeah bill maher <laughs> i told you the one about jenna elfman where he's interviewing jenna elfman he goes now, who's Bodhi? Bodhi. Who is Bodhi? Well, Bo Bodhi is my husband. Like that, she couldn't deal with it at all. Right. <laughs> no, it's hard. To, it's a hard to know how to play it. But really, the only way to play it is to give it up. Same thing with the Zach character. Yeah, it is. Although you could Although, get mad at Zach because I that think, was part of the bit. Yeah, I think it, just seeing outtakes of the Zach stuff, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a there's an approach that celebrities are taking with with that. It's a little different. Oh, because because Zach won't doesn't invade their space. In the no, same, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, he's actually more like just sitting back and delivering these bombs, kind of. Right. <laughs> Some of them are so good. What do you, how do you feel about being the last black president of the United yeah. States? And he, when he gets mad at, uh, okay, I'm going into Obama reverie. What a time period. 2009 to 2000. That was my salad days. I visited the White House. I did everything that made me feel proud to be an American. You did not visit the White House. I did. We did. You did? Yeah, we did the tour. Ah, okay. We did the White House tour. Uh, Isn't it the White House tour? It's called the White House tour. It is yeah. called the White House tour. Yeah. We bought a, uh, a, a, a dog 
stockings. That's, a, that's different than I visited the White House. That was a little bit like visited the White House. No, that's an invitation. Different. Yeah, but I wasn't going to be. You know, I, I may I may be in the, uh, I may have ego problems, but I don't. Not to that point. Like, well, I, like I'll tell my visitor to the White House. No, if he doesn't not, ask, if he doesn't not, ask, we'll just assume I got invited. I think that's what it was more, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had my. I guess I'm saying I had my run. I had yeah. a good run. Yeah. <laughs> it's not your time anymore. I will admit that. It is not my time. You know, I keep yelling at my representation. Why am I not being? No, I don't. I'm not stupid. Uh, why am? Wh- who? Why don't you, you know what would be good? Why don't I go back to the beginning? Go out for commercial auditions? Because those are the greatest. I don't know how many you did, but it takes up all your time and everyone's mean to you and it's and, and you're driving all over Los Angeles. And you feel and like absolutely nothing. You feel like shit. Yeah. And you never feel like, oh, this was good, a uh, good job. I'm learning about auditioning. No, you feel like shit. And uh, if you do it for a week or two weeks or three weeks, you just feel like you felt back then. That's about that's yeah. That's that's about all I did it for. It was two three weeks. I probably I, I probably went on ten commercial auditions. <laughs> Book none. you and I no no. There's no sincerity in you or I. Well, and I wasn't. It was it was. I mean, I was not a type. Right. That's true. I could see that. You know, I was this young, early twenties. But looked older than that. I was fat, but not comically fat. <laughs> you were right in the middle of a I lot of different I just wasn't any type. I was not any type. I didn't look like a, you know, like a teenager. I didn't look, like, you know, so. Like now I look like a middle-aged man. And I, I, could, be, I could be a type, you know. Okay, but, so you're going to go back out now? Yeah, I think that is the time. <laughs> I think the iron is hot. How many did you do, would you say, total? Like 20 maybe or, or more? Tw- auditions about yeah. uh, probably about 10 uh, oh, okay. uh commercial auditions and then you said the hell with it yeah i mean there was... or, or things when uh, if no, I something's mean... not going to be fruitful we're just not going to bang your head against yeah against i mean i did you know i i soon i soon became a full-time writer so it wasn't it wasn't right. something i was going to continue to pursue after that so but uh but no i always i felt like shit I felt like there was, it was a hopeless exercise always. Yeah. Uh, just like on a practical level, a hopeless exercise, not like low self esteem. It's like, no, I wouldn't cast me either. Right. Right. Like I always, yeah. if I ever saw the commercial I auditioned for with the actor, I was like, much better, much better choice than me. And there's so many people in this business of the commercial business who, who like treating you badly. They like, to tell you you can't park in front of the building, and they see actors as annoying. Not everybody, but some of these. Well, people yeah, I mean, do. you're a, you're an obstacle. You're an obstacle. You're someone who's not it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying I'm still to get available. to it. <laughs> I'm still available for endorsements, though, Josh. That's good. Anything comes up. Anything comes up. Anything with jellyfish. Jellyfish. Did you know that Prevagen, I don't know if you knew this, but Prevagen, the reason why it's very effective is because it is, it comes from j- jellyfish. It's actually ground up jellyfish and they're able to measure that the jellyfish's brain merges with your emotional system and you become more jellyfish like, which means you just lie around and have no consciousness. Except for memory. <laughs> I'm worried that balance of nature isn't doing well because I haven't seen the commercials. <laughs> Prevagen is now sponsoring things. It's the Prevagen 500. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's sad to me. It's sad to me because I really do think people are taking Prevagen. Don't sue me. I think you might as well just be shoving, shoving gelatin capsules in your mouth, empty gelatin capsules in your mouth. Oh. It would be just as good as taking Prevagen. You don't think it's more harmful than that? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably more harmful. I never, actually, I never thought, and that's probably true, that the stuff in it might not be good for you. Because we know it's just Or it might junk. work a little. Maybe it works a little. Well, maybe. If you, as soon as you say that, I'm over there in the store because that's does. what I need. Maybe it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't not work to the point that they are being, you know, they're not saying that on the commercial. They are they are able to get away with the commercials they're 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 saying everything they say in the commercials was approved by the FDA. I don't think the FDA gives a shit. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and people don't people don't uh, 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 not our age 
don't know, or probably you know, you never saw advertisements for medications on TV. They didn't, they weren't here except for aspirin and stuff. But this whole thing of uh, why don't you try, uh, you know, and they give you all those side effects. That never, you couldn't have, it just was against, I think it was a law. Or something. It was, yes. It was, it was a change about 20 years ago. Yeah. It's just like the fair right use when law. Viagra came out. <laughs> This company is very sounds very attractive to me. I don't know what they do over there, but they're called Hems. They're called Hems, and the people seem it must be some magical elixir that's not available anywhere else. Oh, I thought but, it was a source of religious songs. <laughs> no, no, it's a. Uh, oh, I forgot what I said now. Hems. Oh no, H I M S. Oh, and it's all these oh. guys, that. and all these guys are saying. <laughs> Here's one, one guy goes, you know, I, I took it and I had a feeling that I, re, I remembered that I used to have. You mean an erection? Is that what you're fucking saying? That's what he's saying, yeah. But he's saying it as if like, oh, you know what? That's a nice change. You've been trying to get hard since you had problems getting hard. And don't tell me. Uh, oh, look, I, really? You try? Do you try every day? To get hard? Yes. No. What's the point? You just said. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to admit to you right now. And oh, I don't care. Hold on one sec. Sure. Will do fuck. Will do fuck. Will do fuck. Will do fuck. Sorry about that. I was going to hang up. I, I, thought of, I thought about hanging up, but yeah. I don't think that would have been good. No, I would have understood. But but it wouldn't have been you. Go, I got you. Yes, you did get me. That's all it would have been. Yeah. But still, uh, uh are still very awkward. Plus, I was right in the middle of an amazing story, anecdote, or About observation. Erections, I believe. Right. I'm going to tell you, when I first started to have sex, I don't care what you, what you reveal. Uh, I had a lot of problems from age 15 to 30, 35, 40. It's too, too quick, not getting hard, all this kind of stuff. I just want to say uh, to anybody out there who has to suffer through my the droopy impressions, uh, to say... Suffer? <laughs> Who's the guy who who uh, the diabetes guy? Uh, uh, yes. I hear you. I hear you. He's on TV. Do you have diabetes? I hear you. So that would be me. Do you have sexual dysfunction? I hear you. I hear you. And the, the sad thing was when I couldn't get hard, it was such a waste because my penis was so fucking huge. Wow. <laughs> I was just about to be, do a. I watch a lot of true crime. I was just about to do a uh, missing persons a report. No, not a charity re welfare. It's not even. Do they call it welfare? Welfare check. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Josh didn't call me back at nine thirty-one. Can you guys drive over there? Is this Eddie? Sam, how are you doing? I'm pretending I'm friendly You're with a the regular. local police. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sam. I always thought the thing in the big chill that didn't ring true was that the one guy was a sellout because he was nice to the policeman in his local neighborhood. Yeah. And and uh, William Hurt thought he was selling out. I think it was William Hurt who said that. Sounds like William Hurt's character. Yeah. Yeah. Can't believe it, man. He for and it's a pretty wrenching, gut wrenching scene. He forces what's his name? What's his name? I can't think of his name now. Who's the Supposedly the star of the hit show. Was it Tom Berenger? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And he's supposed to hop into the car and he injures himself. Right, I recall. And that. then William Hurst says, well, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> very I, think do a, I think they should do a podcast on this. A podcast on uh, Behind the Big Thrill, Behind the Big Chill. 
There was so m- I love, first of all, let's be honest, love that movie. Saw it 12 times when it came out. Thought it was happening. And you right? just couldn't, you couldn't turn off the soundtrack, I remember. <laughs> Wait, let me turn off the soundtrack. No, I meant the soundtrack to The Big Chill. Oh, <laughs> I can remember that right now. See, and that's the other thing, too. Whether, whether I had never seen a movie before, why was I like, hey, have you heard the soundtrack? Is it been, hey, where uh, are you kidding me? Do they get, uh, do they include Jeremiah was a bullfrog? Well, you're goddamn right they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's right at the top. And uh, hers of the grapevine. And Glenn Close is bumping with the other person. It's a funny movie in many ways. Is that the one where Jeff Goldblum is always coming on to people? Yes. I yes. think I love. I can't. I, I can't go I back on you, myself. I think you actually loved it, and I, I think, and I I think you remember it more than most things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just odd. Is it uh, ironic that I would end up being a stickler for high quality comedy? It is and, odd. Uh, in many ways. <laughs> well, I was, there, was, there was a movie that my sister and I loved with George Siegel in it. And it was called A Touch of Class. Yeah. And we thought it was so great and hilarious. It's probably the worst movie. And I know Glenda Jackson is in it. There's good people in it. Yeah. But it's it's. I know it's not that good a movie. And I just want people, if you do look. Oh, I saw something on your wall, either a hallucinated thing or, or a truck came by. Or something like that that I was able to know. It's like a like a regular scientist. Some kind of story cue. Yes, I was talking to. Look, a, I saw a shiny object. I was talking to a pebble the other day, and I said, "What are your what uh, are you a hermaphrodite? Homo, are you a hermaphrodite? Are you a hominid? Are you a marsupial?" And the pebble said, "Your your father was right. Your father, ironically, not even ironically. Uh. <laughs> There's no irony to it." He nailed it. You think I'm an animal. And so I say, yes, I did for one second, but I didn't hold to it. I'm not like a flat earther. I wish I sometimes I wake up and I go. uh, By the way, Mr. Pebble, (laughs) if the earth wasn't flat, why aren't you rolling right now? (laughs) Hey, what do you think of this joke? Uh, Sometimes how are you folks doing? You ever have one of those? Oh, God, I sound like a a hack. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> yes. Sometimes when I'm really, really bored, it's just horribly bored. You know, I say to myself, "You know what? Today, I think I have time for the pain." I, I, you know, normally I would say I haven't got time for the pain. Today, today's so boring, so horrible, so is boring. Should I keep going with boring? It's no, boring. no, no, no. I go with more <laughs> with painful. I keep thinking it's the All Star break, but it's not yet, right? Uh, no, but it seems like it would be coming up. It seems like it would be coming up, but no. I had no. to think what sport you were talking about. <laughs> I'm I'm going to another field now where I'm going to be doing much like George Miller years ago, fifty thirty years after uh, James Taylor's song came out. He said, "What's this deal with I have seen fire and I have seen rain? What's up with that? What kind of experience have you had?" I will be going back and doing old uh, old Beatles songs, Who's Flat Top, stuff like that. Just digging yeah. back into the, uh, he, oh, uh, excuse as me, your, Flat As top. opposed to your contemporary Carly Simon material. <laughs> well, I think that you're missing the, you're missing the, I don't think you're missing. Is that who did, thing. haven't got time for the pain, by the way? Yes. Okay. It was. Yes. <laughs> you're confusing there's something that's called timeless when it stands outside of time. No, I know what timeless is. <laughs> really? Then I wor- I, I knew timeless. I worked with timeless. Uh, and I'm not and timeless. Senator. I know timeless because I watch. Uh, we are a uh, mavens or menches. I'm on watching the uh, the uh, Wimbledon. You're Wimbledon and you're yours. And now it's like timeless. Timely Roger Federer, the new uh, Alcaraz. Timeless. Is that because Rolex is? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> my bad impression. Still, <laughs> you were still able to divine from my poor impression what I was trying to say. Your impressions are impressionistic. Let me tell you something. I'll come right over there right now and throttle you. <laughs> 
Let me tell you something. You're lucky I'm not there because I would, if I was there, I'd be spaced out and asking about why is this thing on the wall. This is good that we're coming up to that summer break time because the threats of violence are becoming more frequently. (laughs) No, no, no. That I was told you I was playing the role of someone's trolling you. I was Ah, playing the. Because didn't you get that thing? You get this once a week, right? Uh, where, Look, where do I get you it? You get a letter. Hey, hey, schmuck. Is the letter apologetic? I forget whether the letter is apologetic or is you're in big trouble. I'm watching you from across the street. If uh, you don't oh, send the me extortion, straight. the extortion letter I yeah. got? Yeah, yes. that was fantastic. Yes. I know what you did. <laughs> I'll never forget when Letterman admitted what he did. When he first said, he goes, when the, when he gets the envelope, and they go, you, "You're in trouble." He goes, "Oh, he goes, what? What is it?" And you're like, "What is it this time?" You, it was like he he thought something might happen. <laughs> he he wasn't like it wasn't surprised. Yeah. Uh oh, what did I do yesterday? <laughs> okay, I don't tell good stories, and when I do tell good stories, they're not about me. I mean, when I don't tell good stories, you know what I'm saying, right? I, you know, I, what I, I don't. That's part of you. You don't. I rarely do. Has it? Is my new tactic? You don't. I lean in to yeah. the stupidity. <laughs> Lean in all you want. You're really never going to invade my personal space in this format. <laughs> it's always too hard. I, you know what? I even went and bought an, a package from Google FaceTime that you where you could get I can get thumbs down stuff. Yeah. I haven't figured out how to work it. You don't know how to work it. I think you have I don't to think actually right. hold it for a little bit. Oh, it's still not working. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Oh my God. One of us triggered it. That is the worst uh, effect I've ever seen in my life. I have a couple of things I have to ask you, though, you know. Oh, I'm glad. Okay. Ah. Okay. Here's uh, a joke. Uh-huh. You know how they go, are you sure you... Are you sure you want to... What do they say? Are you sure you want to... Oh, like on Spectrum. Are you sure you want to exit the channel? Are you sure? It's not on I'm Spectrum. Going, Those are the apps doing that. That's what you're claiming. Are you sure? So I thought it'd be good if, like, something came up and said, are you sure you want to watch Paul Blart Mall Cop? Are you certain? But I'm doing it for tasteful reasons. And it's so funny because it's a new movie that just came out. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the other thing I was going to ask you was, we had a discussion last week that was very, in fact, I brought it up with my therapist. Maybe I did. I could be lying. The meat, meat ethics. Yeah. Meat ethics. Yeah. And I was wondering, I'm not trying to put your brother on the spot, but have you ever talked to about it with him, this kind of ethics? Yes. I mean, he reconciled it uh, by going the other way and becoming a hunter. Really? Yes. He, okay, he so expressed his willingness to kill with his own hands. I've done my own part of that in my memory that I did fish and that I enjoyed fishing and I would do it again if if I had to. Yeah. And it didn't bother me. That's, so I justify <laughs> all fish that way. Sure, okay. Look at that fish's face. I'm not being cruel. I didn't feel guilt, therefore it's okay. I felt it was more the than The sociopath's natural. creed. <laughs> no, no, it's more like the natural, what was it, Iron John or whatever that stuff is. Yeah. You're getting out into the wilderness. It's Iron like, John was not just a pescatarian, let me assure you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, if Ted Nugent was just about the outdoor stuff, I'd love him. Sure. sure I'm with him on it that. It would make sense, at least. <laughs> no, no. I, so, wait a second. Are you calling me a psychopath? Are you saying your brother? I know. I was call, first of all, I was calling you a sociopath. And so, okay, <laughs> like, I, was, I apologize. I was just likening your response to one of a sociopath. I stand. I wasn't saying you are one. If, to, to do a throwback to uh, All in the Family and before that, I stand dejected. All in, all in Norm Crosby, that was? Yeah, it's a mallow problem. It's a mallow problem. What's up, what's up with these mallow propisms? Okay, so your brother, he does go, he did go through it though, right? He went through it ethical, unethical thing. He certainly considered it, yes. And now he's out there, like he's one of those, he's not like, a lot. Hey, not a lot. Hey, <laughs> Do they sing this about him? He went out tiger hunting with his elephant and gun. He's not one of those guys, right? No, he's not. He's not. Oh, he's not, he's not the big. He's not the big game sort. He's the. He's the small bird sort mostly. 
I have to say that is still one of my favorite songs, Bungalow Bill. Really? That is weird. Yes, because, <laughs> because it's not that good a song. I love no, no. It's a very, very good song when you hear He's mommy. When they did the impression of the mommy. But when he looks so fierce, he's, he's mommy, mommy batted in. If looks could kill it, would have been us. It's right. I think it's very funny. And of course, All the I children sing. Hey, but here's the thing. When I was a kid, I thought it was Bungalow Bill. It is. So they're, they're, it's, he, they are actually playing off of something that was a real thing. Or, but I got it from the, from, from the, from the Beatles. Huh. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> See, if I can sense that you're mocking me before. If I can sense that you're mocking me before. I thought I had more. Um, I, did, I thought I had more stuff to talk to you about, but I certainly. Been seven years? I didn't think so, really. <laughs> did I, I'm not supposed to talk to you about the business use of home, am I? Am I wrong about that? The what? Am I supposed to go over with you or my accountant? Business use of home, and also unclaimed is this why property. You're, is this why you're podcasting for more rooms as you're trying to claim more home office space? <laughs> That's right. I don't. We only guess where I'm podcasting room. from today. <laughs> we don't even have a part of the apartment that isn't devoted to the podcast. I keep all the podcast cartridges in here. I keep my uh, research work on the podcast in the bedroom. <laughs> The bedroom? Oh, you mean the rehearsal room? The podcast rehearsal room? Yes. <laughs> and then you're you're taken to court by people who are anno- just annoyed that you tried to take this deduction. They go, "Look, we normally don't even care, but it was so shoddy what you tried to do, claiming your whole entire house, right?" And writing with- <laughs> after it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I swear. I saw. Okay, I wanted to get this. Um, Mad Magazine. I don't know. I thought Mad Magazine was out of business, but it was Mad Magazine's. They look at stand up comics. Yeah. And it was pretty. I was, was reading some funny stuff. So I was like, I want to get this. And then the, the comic, I told them to hold it for me. And I go to the next. They're closed. I thought they said they're going to close in three months. No, they're done. This is Earth 2. Earth 2. Um,. They're going out of heard. business, and you said, hold this for me? What the no, fuck no, no, is they said wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, don't, don't you know, hold on to your, your seat. Maybe you could knock another buck off, you said? <laughs> I, here's my plan for you. If you'll, if you'll go in, I'm, I'm accepting partners in my new philo- ju- jufafel. Not a falafel, jufafel. When I first came out to L.A., I wanted to jump off of a bridge when I, I first had I think, pita. I think you're more of a kerfuffle guy. <laughs> but that's not a real food. The falafel. You wanted to jump uh, off a bridge, the pita. Go for it. Uh, no, no, there's not even much to go for. I wanted to, I wanted to, for some reason, I wanted to, maybe because it was, um, I think I was still, I was struggling with vegetarian then. So I thought if I got into falafels, oh, it would be the greatest thing. I got sick of them halfway through through the second falafel yeah. falafel and then the tahini sauce and then is the pita bread really the bread of champions that people go oh i wish i had a pita like in my home country oh in new york they have the best pita places come on back me up on <laughs> this is something you've been working on for 40 years now it Sounds ain't gonna like work a- it's not gonna work why is it not gonna work because it's just there's no conviction behind it the p- pita spite uh, come on I'm just saying it's just bad. No, okay. You don't understand. I, I moved out here. That was here. fine I, I, when PETA was new and fresh, but it's, you know, it's pretty much that's part what I'm of saying, the landscape 1978. Now. Yeah. I think it was trying to take the country by storm. I, I'm like a regular Guy Fieri, except I don't know much about food. And that's, I don't you're have still, a... You're still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't know. People make fun of him. Uh, is it the shirts or is it the fact that he do, there's not a, a, a sandwich shop he doesn't like? Hey, come down to Pepitito's. I'm in uh, San Juan, Capistrano, Pepitito's. Hey, he puts a whole sausage. What do you do? How do you do it? I stick a whole goat. I stick a goat on top of us. Hey, come down here. I love your shirt, Guy Fiera. <laughs> Dives, horrible. Hey, tonight on Dives, not such great places, and also places that make you sick, I'm going to tell you where in your area 
you can get fast food. <laughs> hey, I've got the yeah, I'm here at the Wendy's over here in Santa Monica. Uh, wait, well, I'm getting someone calling in. You can't do this, Guy Fieri. What are you talking about? I'm not down here, my friend. It's in my, you're supposed to be reviewing diners and dives. I'm, I like food. Is, good food is good food. I like that you gave me enough rope. That was just all I was, all I was doing was letting out the reel. Did you just freeze and go away? You did. Oh. Now you're back. You froze and went away for a second. That's not, hasn't happened in a while. Yeah. I gave oh. you too much rope, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, today. I let today you get out of range. <laughs> today we're going. Hey, I'm Guy Fieri. Today, 7 Eleven, AMP, and Mini Market. Shell. We're doing all the different stores. It's Slushy, slushy Tuesday. You know what I don't like when people you say? You know what the problem with that is? It is not outlandish enough to be funny. I know. <laughs> uh oh. What? Now I froze? Oh, uh, no. Now no. you're the problem. Now I'm not the good guy. I'm telling you, coffee, I don't know who came up with it, but bravo. Bravo. What's that commercial the guy does? Michael Hitchcock? Now maybe he's not. Bravo, Pepito. Bravo. Bravo, Sasanya. Is it dog food? It's dog food. Bravo. You won't even know it's dog food when you uh, when you use it. Bravo. No, it's not. It's a tick collar. It's a tick collar. Bravo, Senora. Bravo. Ah. Ow! It's not TV. It's not TV. It's those commercials that get me. It's not TV. It's not TV. It's those commercials that get me. Glad you glad you tracked down the well, and then we're gonna well, you know when we have our our meeting on Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh, our pre, you know, I'm gonna you're gonna bring up our state a, of the pod. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, Good I, morning. Do know, okay. I do know what garrulous means. Yeah. Okay. So we know that, but I thought of a, a, a nickname. For, so I don't want you to call me garrulous or something like that, but I have a good nickname you, for you. Okay. You ready? Sure. Curmudgy. Sure. Hey, okay. Curmudgy. Sure. I'm going to wait to use it. I haven't used it yet. But you have to reveal yourself as a curmudgeon. And you do, you do it. I mean, I'm not saying you're, you're like Andy Rooney. Can I call you Irritoodle? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny that you say that because I have, this is no lie. I have come up with an idea of a superhero. Annoy, like, and I know this isn't the first time someone said this, but he's the great annoyer. He's annoy, his annoy, he uses his. And you're sure annoying, that's a hero? It's an anti-hero. It's called a villain, Andy, and you're it. <laughs> Annoy. Oh, my God. Shut up. Shut up. He won't stop talking about Biden like that. Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm very, you know, this is not how what I perceived today was going to be. What did you think was going to happen? I was going to be like, you know, we're going to talk about the fact that my neighbor last night, my neighbor. By the way, up, now, up to one person a week wants questions back. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm, right. I think we should do it. Right, I'm declaring it right now. Next week we're doing questions. Next week we're going questions, and I'll even retweet it. <laughs> my neighbor is mad at me now. Did you know you have uh, what? You have to. Do, you can't do it. Use an M80 inside the house on. The, the 4th of July, and various jokes like that. Sounds like something Irritoodle would do. Irritoodle. <laughs> I didn't hear hardly anything. I started vacuuming. What the fuck? You didn't hear anything? I started like, vacuuming. Susan, we didn't hear much, right? It was like being Bernie Shaw in 92 <laughs> in Baghdad. <laughs> it's terrible. Nobody wants your desert storm <laughs> metaphors for fireworks. Nobody. I checked. How, how are you doing with the end of the world? Or Well, it sounded like it last it? night. but uh, Okay, so it was really bad. I have to, excuse me. I'm very sorry. Please uh, excuse me. Okay. I got to cut down on the cocaine. I find it's easier to just edit the nose blowing out rather than go hunt for a funny noise. <laughs> Those were pandemic times. Right. We're not doing, that's not us today, right? No. That's not us. All right, I'm back. 
Woo. So, yeah, it was very loud. Uh, the doggies, they must, they hate it, right? Fucking, there's, just, there's no way to. Hate the, it, yeah. I hear cats, and now maybe I'm, I'm not trying to do a, did you know the Beatles is spelled Beatles, but I heard cats, I hear a lot of cats don't like it either. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought cats. Fish, on the other hand. I thought, I thought cats it's like ostensibly. It's like a jacuzzi. <laughs> I don't know, and I don't know if you said to me, I think you sent me an email, and you said, on the Friday version of this show, on the Friday day, please try to open up a conversation about what you learned about cicadas. So, Josh, I couldn't believe it. I really can't believe it. I'll make it short. God damn it, Andy. Every 17 years we have this conversation. Every 13 <laughs> years. There's two cycles. <laughs> There's two cycles. There's a 13 year cycle and a 17 year cycle. And I'm saying, how bored do we have to be over as the anthrop, the arachnid project? Okay, so here's what happens they stay underground. And I don't want to tell you that all the disgusting things that just like underground. It just sounds very boring down there. Uh-huh. And every 13 or 17 years, depending on the species, they flood up, they flood, they, they, come out like crazy cicadas uh-huh. and what happens is the birds love them and are satiated but and other uh predators or whatever eats them but they can't eat all of them this is their this is their philosophy they can't eat all of them can they i'm, I'm imagining that's what no, the guy said at the no. meeting at the meeting where they signed up on they this. push back from the table those birds yeah, you may go ahead. Keep eating, you stupid bird. Keep eating until you bust out your gullet. Meanwhile, they're mating. The two or three that are mating are mating. Uh-huh. Now, what they get out of the mating, I didn't follow the story. <laughs> Is that? A, uh, and then they start talking about caterpillars, but that, they're not caterpillars, are they? I don't know. But you get. But, but, <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm do you sorry. Be, But but and you said to me because you're a creationist. Uh-huh. You said you believe every. <laughs> I thought that was cicadas, pretty cool. By the way, day what four. Did I say? Day four to cicadas. Are you kidding me? Day four. Are you saying I've talked about it before? No, I'm saying oh. God created them on day four. Mm. You just called me a creationist. I was yes ending you. <laughs> you know the thing about it, and I'm not saying I'm pro creationist just because I I believe in God and claim it's not that kind of God. They make if you go to the creation museum, you don't believe call- in a maker God. <laughs> They don't call it the Creationist Museum, but I think they call it Creation Museum. And I was looking at the, I mean, you could, they had, it's like, I don't know, they've got like things that look like dinosaurs and stuff. I mean, they, they couldn't build a big place like that and have it be totally based on bullshit. Am I right? No. <laughs> Six Flags <laughs> Over History. <laughs> what if you were just somebody born in that in, the, in that area and you had no idea what it was? And you just went down there and said, let's take the kids down to, you think it's a science right. museum, right? I think once you see the ark, you question <laughs> it. Wait, the ark, okay, let me just, in, for my own edification, you're saying the ark is not historically based or is historically based? I'm saying there's still some question. Leonard Nimoy in the 70s said we might have found it, but I, I'm on the, I'm... <laughs> It did how many, there's every, you know, on Netflix, there's any, every, every show that you want is on there. Are there people from Saturn, aliens from Saturn here probably, who knocked out all the Martians? Yes. <laughs> Netflix has a four-part series. I watched 55 minutes of a guy. <laughs> I know I've said this before, but it's worth repeating. I'm here. I'm eating whatever I'm eating, some yogurt. And they go, yep. And then they press the button and Kennedy went down to the lower part of the car. <laughs> that took me that long to turn it, it really, that, that long. That really does question your critical thinking. Quite that a bit. is, you know, what it is. Also, these people who are full of shit, they do know. They learn the lingo. Even Joe Rogan has learned some lingo. You know what I mean? Where it sounds like he, well, he doesn't sound like he knows who he's talking about. No, but but you know, some of these people do, like Sam Harris or all these. They, they try to couch their hideous views in some kind of uh, logic. Yes. Like uh, the guy, the guy, I don't even can't remember his name, just a horrible guy. He was accused of uh, coming on to all these women and, uh, 
And he was the guy who was just saying, we're just about to have solved the entire universe. Him and Richard Dawkins. We're solved the entire... You don't need God. That's what their argument was. We have solved it. We're right on the verge of a unified theory. Yeah. Well, not... It's better than that. You just won't have to... We're taking God out of the equation. We'll have you want you want to feel good. We'll give you a piece of paper and you go. This is it. Are you sure that this is all it right here? That's all you need. Although I do, I mean, in, in defense of science, take God out of the equation, no matter what. No, no, no wait, thanks, <laughs> wait. Why? Here's the way you do it. You like my father, Daddy. Stop it, Daddy. No, you know just how to get inside my uh, uh, unsweet spot because. Uh, it's hard when you say you believe. Now I say I, I say I believe in God, but I don't want it uh, like out as part of my CV. Yeah. <laughs> I never just learned that word. I don't want people like when they come to the comedy club go, "It's just fucking guy." Check I'm gonna be CV. a tough guy. I'm gonna say I'm still like, "Hey, fuck no, oh, oh, you believe in in Jesus? Uh, I got you, Jesus, right here." Stuff like that. I haven't come up with the whole. You know, if you watch any of the Olympic trials, God is still. Well represented. <laughs> well, even the baseball players, unless they uh, when when they go up, maybe they're not. They're going up to their father. Or it seems like there's a bigger wave of uh, athletes uh, praising God than there was. Yeah, maybe uh, they'll make it. It's not we like were, they do when it. we were when I was coming up. At least. When you were coming up, it was completely it was it was considered it was considered do rigor. Do you feel I'm garrulous today? Yes. You do? Yes. <laughs> Every day. If you had... Every to, time you if, ask me... If I me, said to you Obama, and you had a word, what word would you say? Obama. What's the word? Right? Not craven, right? Not craven. Not craven. No. No. What kind of an asshole would call Obama craven? What kind of an asshole would remember 10 years later? <laughs> me. It's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm realizing... Oh, oh, yeah. I came out the other day in the uh, ex formerly Twitter, and I... Uh, I said, don't listen to McDreamy. I'm still going after John Favreau. Buh, 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 buh. You think I've forgotten that he slammed me in 2016 for putting down Briere? I had to even look up the person I was putting down. And uh, so that went out there. And in the old days, maybe I would have agonized about that or thought, hey, hey what a... What a bold move that was. It's meaningless. Whatever you say or do is meaningless. Unless you're going to put it in your act. Now, I'm working on my album. So I might get something out of this yeah. blue sky. Yeah. Blue sky straight to my act. Sure. I'm sorry. You, didn't, you know, I got tired today. I'm sorry. I'm tired of. I, I just couldn't put the books here again. Is it? Is it like it's all the same metaphor that I'm short? Right? It's all because I'm short, right? Put the book underneath me. Or put it underneath the computer. Why can't I just have the computer on a table like a regular human being? Instead of balancing it on your toe. Instead of being up here, uh, when I have a, I have my two Bob Dylan books underneath it. Because why? Because you don't like my uh, you, my V neck black uh, under. This is my Louis C K look today. That's great. <laughs> How can I tell you that? Um, Oh, I heard a, a, a definition of a narcissist that I think we could probably all agree about. And now you can see that everyone is on the, not that everyone's on the continuum, but a narcissist, if you have narcissistic personality disorder, you probably had an upbringing so horrible. You were told that you were nothing. And as a defense mechanism, you develop, I'm the best. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, it pans I, out for you. <laughs> it's not funny. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Something I take mental health. I take my own mental illness very seriously. You know, you think you know. You joke to me. You joke to me. But what? What about if you were in the same? Situation? Here's the reason. Also, I, I'm, I wouldn't be good on a roast. I can't remember who I'm roasting or what the topic is. <laughs> right? Yeah. It would I be forget. Hard. And also, I would not who, be. Who was I hating? Right. That's why I couldn't be. Pr if I was like this podcast was I was Biden or something. Or I was the and this was my pod I couldn't run because you'd be because they go, oh, is what's going to happen when he loses his place every 10 seconds? No, yeah, no, don't run. Mm -mm. I will not endorse you. You know, who, who, things are looking good. And you told me she really felt that this guy 
did have the Kennedy spirit, and he will win, you said. But I'll tell you that, RFK Jr., when it's this past starts coming, he goes, I told you I'm a whore, was a whore. I told you I wasn't a church boy. I told you I did horrible things in my past. He goes, hey. And he used to even say, I have more skeletons in my closet than skeletons are us, or whatever he says. That's not the actual And you joke. think shooting a dog is off-putting. Right. Wait, you see. I slept with a dog and then shot him. And then ate him. Oh. And then ate him. And then... That, oh, I was doing a bit. This is, I think, is going to be a funny joke. But why do I bring on my early jokes? But the idea that, uh, like, I, I'm, I was this true crime thing about Ruby Frankie. It's very depressing. Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand or whatever that, and uh, they just did horrible things with their own children and everything. Just terrible, terrible things. But they kept saying that uh, God, God told me this, and then God told me don't feed them, and then God told me uh, they're they're more wicked than I thought. How how is it possible that God is somebody who can't shut their fucking mouth for two seconds, right? And everything they say is horrible. Take your ch- children and put them in the pond. Anyway, I'm starting on that. It's not funny now. No, it's not no, funny it's now. Not. It is so not no, funny. You, you, you're wrong. You're, you're far. Wrong. You're like a ways from funny. I tell you, but here's the thing that's saddest about what I'm doing. If I was doing even one dead day children? a week, one day a week of stage time, you would I wouldn't be burdening you with this. Yeah, I had him. Did I tell you what? I was sitting down yesterday and came up with more funny ideas. I can't give so you. I can't give you. I can't you. give you the rope on the uh, dead kid bit like I did on the other. Oh well, if uh, if, it, if it helps at all, I don't remember what it, we're talking about. Dead I, kid bit. I know. Wait, if I said something that's going to make me. Uh, look like a white privileged man. Yes. Or something like that. Yes. Good evening. <laughs> Andy Murray, we, oh, very, uh, for tennis fans, and I am one, and my the wife is, oh, what a beautiful tribute to Andy Murray at Wimbledon, if you get a chance to watch. And it's unbelievable. This guy won two, Engl, uh, England hadn't won since the 20s or 30s, Fred Perry or something like that. He uh, won two Wimbledon. Did he win two? I only remember Yes, yeah. I didn't realize that myself until I saw it again. 2013, 2016, and he won the U.S. Open. But, uh, and he also won the Olympics in 2012 and 16, so that was pretty amazing. Yeah. The Olympics kind of broke it through for him. Because it, I think it loosened him up. Then he won. The, then he won Wimbledon, the U.S. Open. In any other era, he would have stood out. It's unbelievable. But that's the thing: is he does stand out. And now I'm going to launch into: um, is it important who's the great, best of the sport that we recognize? No. Or are we not just celebrating the fact that the? Am I not celebrating the Roger Federer that's in me? No. No, I'm not because I know I can't no, do it. There isn't. There. There's not. Where not even there? close. Where is this? Where is the disciplined Swiss guy in you? I don't no, see. It. Not at all. <laughs> and when when have I been neutral about anything? <laughs> but 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 those Swiss jokes. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, what two topics will you talk about with uh, Swiss people? Go. Uh, cheese and watches. That's it. Thank you. Timeless. How come no one's ever approached me with timeless Andy Kina? The Apple Watch 12, something. And now people are saying, do I have an Apple Watch? And now people are saying, uh, no one's saying these things. That's the sad part, is I think that people are saying them. They're not saying them. Andy, Boy, uh, you, Andy's watch head. How am I doing for time? <laughs> hey, how's space time? How are we doing on space time? You know, I came up with that, and I thought, and I was, and not, I got a big laugh once, and the fact that I didn't get a big laugh Later, made me feel like what's a, what's up today? You can't even call it. You can't do your gay French thing anymore. What's up with people? They don't understand the simplest of jokes. Why? Why? Mm. So, how do you feel? Any, anything you want? I hate the politics. Is there anything you want to say? It's uh, it's uh, it seems like a uh, inevitability that that, uh, that he's going that he's going to go. You think so? I kind okay. of feel here's, that way. I think because yeah. I think you know, I think he can he can do well at this interview tonight. He can he can look good. I don't think there's any yeah. question of that. Is it live? I don't I don't sense? know if it is, but I think you know there'll be something to show that it's not trickery. He'll hold up a yeah. you know, he'll hold up newspapers. 
as he goes. But, um, you know, I, th- you know, like he, ha- you know, he hasn't done a press conference. That's sort, you know, that's sort of telling to me. Well, uh, he is it. He has to be as maybe between ten a.m. and four p.m. As yeah. long as it's between ten a.m. Yeah, and exactly. four p.m. But I think I mean the thing about what whatever the case is, everyone saw the. You know, you say I had a bad night, and that's clear that he did. Oh no, I, I know. But, I'm not. But I'm everyone not imagines. I said. Everyone imagines that bad night. That person from that bad night in worse situations. Right. You know. But you know, we don't need Slate Magazine. These. These. No, these I mean, I, you know, as always, it's like I'm not like feeling like part of the crowd to shake him out of the thing because I think he's competent, but I think he's too old for the gig. You know. Yeah. Well, but the the article in Slate was like. Why, uh, why Biden might be even more dangerous than Trump? Come on, come on. Yeah, fuck them. Face. Fuck them, yes. <laughs> come on, Slate. Fuck a lot of people. Exactly. Yeah, uh, but. And, and I mean a celebratory way because I'm getting into hedonism and polyamorism. But I just feel like, I mean, even, ju- even just the gesture of another candidate being, you know, cause you can still go with Trump still in the race. It's time for a new generation. You know, that's true. You need that. You need a slogan to defeat him. Don't you just need someone? I don't think who's... it was a slogan so much as a point. Come on, let me do my joke. <laughs> you should have seen. You couldn't see this because you don't see the YouTube feed of our show. But when I said, uh, "Yeah, let's do the letters," Josh went, "Yes." I was yes! inside. I was. I didn't. I actually did fist pump. But uh, I'm going to predict what some of the letters are. Bing bang the bing bang. But we're not going to get pickles. Do not That's be little people. Don't be little people in advance, you dick. Wait. <laughs> I'm not little. Look, because these sh- – what? Okay. What's going to make the show better? A couple of schlubs <laughs> and their questions? <laughs> Look, I respect well, Let's just say there's no do. number associated with our show that's going up. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I have told you that I want to do a cruise like the uh, – the TCM cruise for for our show. Yeah, because uh, you know, p- people like that TCM cruise. They like to. Can, they we, get, have... can we get a pontoon boat? <laughs> I just saw you absolutely as the skipper hitting me. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the pro. You, I wouldn't. You wouldn't play Gilligan, would you? No, I'd be Gilligan. I, and I would hit you with my hat. I would. Again, you know, not not just I wasn't a stand up comic at the time, but most of my when are we talking? When Gilligan's Island was on TV, oh, okay. but it certainly was a topic of conversation amongst everybody. It was like a hacky thing that we all enjoyed, except it was uh, what do you say about a kid who watched unironically that show as a little kid and thought it was the funniest goddamn thing I've ever seen? He's an American Gilligan. American kid in the sixties, I think is what you could <laughs> say about him. Oh no. Like how could yeah. you have discerning taste for television in the Well 60s? that's true. Well, I know what you're saying, but like <laughs> I still marvel I'd like at... to watch some prestige television instead. <laughs> well, I still can't believe People that... let me tell you about my best friend and he... that's prestige TV. What's that? What is that for? A courtship of Eddie's father. Oh you knocked out my whole mental life now. With that, oh, Superman! This like that really is both all me, my sister, and my brother. We were all obsessed with Superman. It really is one of the worst shows. Like you couldn't watch it for five minutes now. No, no, it's and not, no one does. It's, it's not camp. <laughs> no one watches it. No. for five minutes. Anymore. No one. But this is again part of the narcissistic personality disorder. Is I believe we all grew up loving Superman. I know. This is why. Things like unfrosted get made. <laughs> hey, don't put me in that club. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Can you imagine Jerry Seinfeld? He's smart enough to know his movie blows. Maybe don't you think he's almost smart enough? No, but he knows the movie's going to come out and everyone's going to hate it. And what's his angle on it? I don't care. I mean, how fucked up do you have to be? Look, I'm not saying I'm not fucked up in my head. I've got problems. But how fucked up do you have to be to that that becomes a thing? I I haven't done anything relevant since comedians and the thing get the other thing. 
And you could argue that that shows half the people I'm going to the thing with. I think I need to put a summer or 18 months into a, maybe the worst idea. Remember when we had sugar frosted flakes? That was crazy. I'm not doing Seinfeld though, but you get the idea. I do get the idea. No, but that's what he, he where did, where do you come up with an idea like that? You don't smoke a joint and come up with like that. <laughs> no, you're on making... you're on a Zoom call with three people. You're you're a huge star, you make a joke, they all laugh. Then someone else <laughs> makes a joke in the same vein, the other three laugh. Someone goes, right. We should write a movie and then really? anytime they someone just... says a joke, they put it in. Are you fellas really si- who you fellas, are you really serious that just me? Talking about my memories of uh, of of breakfast foods would be a great movie. It sure would. I can't do Seinfeld anymore. I can't do my Seinfeld. I can't hear him anymore. That's, That's sad. I, I, I don't want to remind you. I don't. I thought would be more mean than helpful. <laughs> there should be. We should have a collection of the worst. Of, you know, none of the stand up is great at the beginning of Seinfeld. Even though I love the show, but the stand, but the worst of them are. It's just like. And the guy is looking at his tea saying, I don't think I ordered karma money. No, that's too, that's too, that's too, uh, he's still in the mode of noticing things about people that make the, draw everybody together. I understand, but you're talking about those jokes from Seinfeld as if they just happened. Yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. That's what I'm pitching. (laughs) I'm pitching timelessness. You know, your whole thing was, Hey, if we want to do a morning, you used to say, I love the idea of a morning zoo show, uh, but that means, Andy, you have to keep up on everything. And I said, no, I don't want to keep up on what Pink is doing or who the current, no. Let me harp on my people. <laughs> Just like the, I got, as you get older, you go, why can't I have the people who, who like me, 80 year old people, why can't they open their goddamn, send me some cups of coffee? You know, because I think as I go along, I really am appealing to my demographic. And that's uh, people who are dying, Uh, people who are not. I I, I don't know if you say nihilistic. I say narcissistic in your case. You know, that's not nice. (laughs) You know, what if I did have narcissistic personality disorder? What if I did? What What would you do then? A podcast with you? (laughs) You know, Josh, (laughs) it's not funny. What if this, what if uh, you didn't see the signs of me? Not wanting to commit suicide, but wanting to take a lot of naps. <laughs> How come you didn't call me, Josh? Susan will say, do you see the signs? What do you mean? Every five times a day, he goes, I think I'm wearing that. I'm going to lie down just for a second. I'm sleepy. <laughs> and we'll be back with old men interviewing old men he old just men. kept insisting he was resting his eyes i don't i don't uh, well how far am i away from an i didn't alan want to king? press it <laughs> how far am i away from an alan king or david steinberg like uh show where i interview i'm andy kindler today on my show i mel brooks like that type of thing i know i won't get mel brooks but you know where i'm going with it right yeah i mean get on big old stars to not listen to I told you there used to be a great show on 870 in L.A. And this guy, his name was Greg, I think. He would talk about show business and the old show business. And I thought it was, and you know, this was when I was listening to talk radio like a moron, like a young person who, who's <laughs> trying to find his way. <laughs> and we had Michael Jackson, uh, because when you go to Greenblatt's, you, you can expect not only to find food. But fine. So, see, that's the way talk radio was British back then. It was really what a sad man. Sad man. Sad man well, drives was, out. Who you what? or Michael Jackson? Was a sad Me. Man. Okay. Sad man drives from the East Coast with pizza in his hand. <laughs> he can't stand little many strip balls, and he doesn't understand. Why was I not Weird Al with that kind of uh, parody? What were you parodying? Don't let it bring you down. It's only Andy Kindler burning. You don't even know that song. You tell me my Neil Young is too out of date. <laughs> yeah, it's too out of something. 
You know that song, right? Don't let it bring you down. Sure. It's now. only castles burning. Here's what I realized. My therapist a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, told me something I didn't even get because of my narcissism. Your and check I just won't got clear. It. <laughs> I, I, I actually got it. I, it, it, it so, so what that I'm 67? I got it. When I was telling her one day about how I'm singing, but how do I know if I'm, you know, like the same old. The thing is, I'm overcoming this thing where I used to not want to sing. And then the po- she's trying to point out to me that I, and what I was saying was that the singing itself is its own reward. Yeah. Thank you. The si- and now, how much do you have to be wrapped up in, in show business tripes or tropes to think, not to just start singing, which I did. But to start singing and then evaluating uh, how commercial it was and whether I should be a lead guitarist. Right. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's a good thing to know. It's the grandiosity issue you suffer with. Yeah, but it's as you're doing it, you're getting the benefit. I know this if I sing and I'm walking around, that's, I feel That's better. the only reason I've ever sang. Exactly. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? <laughs> I told I tried. I tried Singing so is its own reward. I didn't say in those phrases, but it's just, you know. Well... You know what? Sometimes it doesn't. This doesn't. is a, this is the problem of of uh, living a life with impossible standards for others. True. That's, are you talking <laughs> about my father and mother? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, why my father and mother? Okay. Okay. So, I got it. All three of us felt like we were absolutely worthless and that we had no talent, or we were lazy. Lazy. Yeah. Okay. So, I think the jury is in. <laughs> we, for all whatever reason, whether it was abandonment, it was ever it was like we interpreted it that. Uh, I, and further, when I got them laughing in the car, yeah. But here's where that all breaks down. Oh come on! You're gonna break, you're gonna go out, you're gonna take, go on to therapy again and take it down. Yeah, because so, okay. you know you act as if your parents shut down your musical hopes. No, they didn't. Right. No, no, no. Well, they did. You, you went to L.A. You went to L.A. to be a musician. I'm not claiming I could have. I'm not claiming. Okay, this is another thing I came to last night. Is like, you know, I think about all the time when I die. And I swear to God, I think about what will what will the uh, what will the you know the Obit. thing in the yeah what's it going to do? Or also just thinking about people being sad. They're not going to talk about your music at all in your obit. But it's even worse than that. It's not even that. It's like. Oh, if I die today, are they going to call me the Bob Dylan of, of comedy? It's too, no. late. It's well, too late to start uh, thinking about legacy, my friend. It's too, exactly. It's, too so, late words, it's like, yo, you better hurry up, Andy, if you want to be the Bob Dylan of comedy and write about 30,000 more jokes. But the point I'm making is that you do, as a kid, under, under, misunderstand what fantasizing and admiring people is if you have no self-esteem and so you throw yourself into these things whether it's a little kid playing baseball look at and like with the hope that that's going to be how you're going to get self-esteem and uh so it is so of course when i made everybody laugh on the re- misreading the sign pewter tiger in the tank and i heard them laugh of course i was you want to, as a kid, use that to get attention. Uh-huh. So, of course, of course, those things happen. But uh, I don't know what our point is. I I, know, I, the, yeah. Oh, God damn it. Don't you know? The thing is, this is what I'm so scared of. I say these brilliant half, well, they're half baked. Well, many times they're not even sentences. Right. And he, get, I get nothing. And then he, uh, you know, and they're brilliant. If you were to. Uh, you know, allow air around them. You know what I'm saying? If someone editing it would like, edit it like to make me look like Biden. It's Biden in the, in the debate. The idea, the very idea. I think if he had gone the very idea with the malarkey, I don't think he should have used malarkey either. That was but, the worst. No. It looked like bumpkin versus, it looked, it looked like country mouse versus city mouse when you say malarkey to Donald Trump. <laughs> Nobody ever thought it was – they thought it was oddly eccentric that he used malarkey, but no one ever thought it was like he nails it with malarkey. 
No. Right? No. It was always like, uh, tell us another story about Scranton. Here's the thing. I am totally in the camp of voting for Biden-Harris if they're in a coma. Or I will buy any, I will vote for any team. But you have to, you people, you can't just take the next six weeks off. You've got to work, 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 figure out who's going to be, not screw Kamala Harris. And I want that on my desk uh, to yesterday. Right? Well, we all unite around Cheryl Hines. <laughs> Cheryl Hines replaces. People are talking about her on Twitter the other day, so I'm sure she's saying something that made me laugh so hard that it's got, the fact that this is coming back to bite her in her uh, career behind is fantastic, isn't it? Sure. It is fantastic. If you think it's healthy that I have these fucking grudges that just last forever and ever. That Well, what does it get me? What did, she, just, what did she do to you again? Mm, nothing. Oh, okay. Cheryl Hines? No. Nothing. No, I mean, I'm, she's worthy of ridicule because the craziest fucking thing she ever said was, I do. <laughs> no, I mean, she, I mean, she is, she, she, I have a lot of things I could say about her, but it's not interesting. You see, this is the other thing. You used to tell me. When did now, this, when this become the criteria for you? You told me when the podcast started, every grudge better be on the table. I'm not, if you don't look embarrassing and cry a little bit and, and, and you accuse me of stuff, it's not going to, we're not going to get traction. <laughs> I beg you, take me down with you, is what I said at the beginning of that. That's right. Well, also at the beginning, and this is interesting, in the beginning we had more technical difficulties. Now, here's the thing. I don't want you to be scared that if we had a technical difficulty today, that I would still not be as wonderfully, what, what was I? Gracious. Accommodating. <laughs> But I think you must be using different uh, on-off switches now or yeah. batteries. And how come I don't get charged for the batteries? Oh, my God. Wow. I'm getting a wow. little... I'm if, full, if I, I didn't just, want to ask for money from people at buymeacoffee.com slash thoughts no, player, I would have hung up on you No, no, come on. Do it, for, but, and do it clearly. Well, you know, do it like, clearly. I don't know if I... But what? Do what clearly? Say buymeacoffee.com slash thoughts spiral? Yes. Oh, okay. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. It's true. But they probably won't anyway, but... After today, it's justified not to. I didn't. That wasn't a good out. That wasn't a good out. I felt Why don't you like do I a thing where I can do a thing where I can hang up on you. Okay. You do a thing, and I'll hang up on it. I have never heard you dumber. 